Thanks, Chris. Cool. Um, hi, everybody. Um, yes, so the idea today is to show a little bit what QField Card can do for you and uh, why it is an amazing tool together with QField, obviously. I'll assume that most of you already know QField. If you do not, it's um, an application that has taken over the world, basically. It's uh, a lot of people using it out there. We have currently, only on Android, um, 560,000 downloads. We have um, monthly usage of about 100,000 people. And uh, we are currently at version 2.2 of um, um, of the release cycle. Um, QField is a mobile mapping application which runs on Windows, um, on iOS, currently in, no, let's say better, until yesterday in test flight. And uh, since this morning, I got a mail uh, in, um, from this fruit company that we are allowed to push the button and release it. Uh, so that's going to happen with version 2.3. That's, um, but I'm not allowed to tell you yet. So it's just keep it in the room. <laughs> but uh, if you want uh, to get QField, you just go to qfield.org/get, and it will redirect you to whichever platform you're on. The idea of QField um, has always been to be able to uh, work for you as an online tool, but as well. Um, as an offline tool, because data are in different places. So um, you want to, to be able to capture those wherever your data is. You don't want to um, just um, miss some data because you have no connectivity, or you don't want to be super slow just because you are purely offline oriented. So there was a thought from the very beginning um, of uh, building the tool when I started it back in 2011, um, uh, it was always the idea that eventually it'll turn into this thing that just works all the time, that you can all the time be digitizing data. And um, I'm really happy that we are there now. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's a really cool thing. And to get there, we had to build QField Cloud because um, what we did before was basically with QField, you connect to a PostGIS database and you'll have your live connection. Everybody's happy. You're digitizing. You, you put your points. They get into some um, quarantine database that you want to be, have a bit of control over. You do your quality assurance, and you move things over to your production database. Work fantastically as long as you had connectivity. Um, the other use case was, well, you do a dump of your PostGIS database, and it works all the time. You can go underground. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. But then you'll have to. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> but then you'll have to go home, to go back to the office, synchronize data back, and blah blah blah. Semi cool. Um, and that's where the idea of QField Cloud was born, basically, on saying, okay, good. How do we make people work as if they were offline, but actually being online, so that they can just keep on working? And that's where QField Cloud comes in. On top of it, um, obviously, we focused a lot on. Um, on additional things like teams, like roles, conflicts management, and all that, that came together with the possibility of having a centralized place where you can actually manage all those things. And today, I'm just basically going to go through a, a little, <laughs> I'm trying going to tr go through um, a, a use case and show you how it looks like. First of all, obviously, we have a login, and then you get in and you see all your projects you're working on. For if somebody is not um, used to how QGIS, uh, sorry, QField work, it's basically a QGIS with a simplified user interface that it's made for mobile devices. But in the background, it's a full-blown QGIS. That means we can deal with any data sets that QGIS has, and it works with QGIS projects which means that you do your styling on QGIS, upload it to the cloud, it gets pushed out to the devices, and they look as beautiful as they look in QGIS. Your forms are already configured as you configure them, so it's, uh, there's a lot of time of work to be saved there. When you get in here, you, you get all your projects you have, um, the organiz organizations you're a member of, um, kind of your profile, username, you know, the standard things of a, of a cloud thing. 
Um, as soon as you go into an organization, um, there we have the possibility to have teams. So within an organization itself, you'll have teams that have members. And the members can have different roles within the organization. They can be a mem just a plain member or they can be an administrator. That's the first level of, of role, which is not very interesting yet because it's just part of how you manage the Qfield Cloud kind of thing. The interesting part is really more when we get into the project. And here um, we can see in the overview of a project, we have um, two people involved. The project has a total of five files. There were already three iterations over it. So we get kind of a rough idea already of, um, of what, uh, what this project is all about. And as soon as we start clicking deeper, we'll get all the information about it. When I go to the Files tab, um, that is where I can see actually versioning of my data. So I can see any data that is part of my work uh, can be versioned. So I have a geo package that is versioned. I have a QGIS, server, uh, QGIS project that is versioned. It, down at the bottom, you'll see some images that are versioned as well. So, and it's not that everything is the same version. So they're really only the, the real version that that file has. So if the geo package changes, it's going to get a new version, but the QGIS project is not going to get a new version. So this kind of gives you the possibility also, in case you mess up with your data, uh, to really just go back in time, recover, you click on the, on the little blue button, and um, you got all your data back in the status of uh, September, oh wow, that's good coincidence, Marco, September 11, uh, 21. So, um, really, really easy way just to go back. Furthermore, um, when you click on a file um, change log, you'll get to see what actually happened. So here, just a listing of whenever the changes were, and um, yeah. sorry, yeah, it doesn't right click gives me a context menu, but it has a back, so it's all right. <laughs> Um, it's okay, no worry. <laughs> um, so I can go all the changes to the changes tab. I'll see all the changes that happen on the project, and I'll get into detail later on. And then I can go to the collaborator. And here I can see that um, my project has um, three collaborators in this case. Two are groups, and one is a user. So I can really mix and match, say, well, my Florence East team has Read, uh, reading only permissions, my Florence West team has reporter permissions. And here we have uh, five levels of um, granularity. We go from read only, where you can obviously do nothing but looking at the data, uh, via um, reporter, which is someone that can bring back data, but cannot touch somebody else's data. So it's, it's, it's just giving us new data. It's the classical way when you say, well, open it up to somebody and just give us back data. We'll look at it and see what we do with that. And then we can go further to, um, there is an editor lever where you can start also editing your things. There is a manager lever where you can edit also the QGIS project. And then you have the administrator rights which can do basically anything. So that's the kind of granularity that we have um, here at the cloud. The good thing of solving permissions issues here is that you're not just as if you were doing it in Postgres, waiting for the people to do something and then tell them, oh no, you're not allowed to do that. Because if you just give only read permission on the Postgres database, they can still edit and then push, and at that moment it goes like, mm, sorry, no, not for you. Here we actually can guide the user interface of Qfield to not allow for, for editing if you are in a read-only project. The next step, we have jobs. We see exactly, actually, what's happening or what has happened in the past in the project. We can see, uh, well, that the very, at the very beginning, we processed a QGIS file. That's when we uploaded the project. We looked at the project, and we created a project out of it. Then we had an export, then we a new version of the project. So we can really go back and see what has actually happened to, to our work uh, during the, the whole uh, life. 
Then we have um, the classic delta apply is when something comes back from someone in the field, so it's really applying the difference to the data set. And then finally, some settings where you can, uh, you can rename your project, you can um, make it public, and one little thing um, that, um, that we have is that you can say you always override conflicts. If you want, you can check that, and basically the newest version always wins. If you want that, you can turn it on. If you do not want that, it will get you to the um, conflict management um, kind of um, um, page that I'll show you later on. So um, the project is uploaded. People have been using it. Someone else started wants to start using it in QGIS, goes with the Qfield Sync plugin, uh, downloads the existing project. All the data is downloaded. The project is here, gets opened, and then I can go and change things. And as soon as I change the project, I change the data, I can synchronize back them up to the cloud. And here you see that in, the, um, in this um, little dialog, we have a yellow arrow, which is saying, well, there were changes. They get pushed. They get pushed to the cloud. I can also say, well, no, actually, I want to pull again the latest version because I did some mess up here locally, so I can override that. There is no issue, it's just a matter of you choosing which direction you want thing to happen. Um, we can, and that's something that we can do uh, also without Qfield Cloud, but in Qfield itself you can say what to do with each, each layer. Um, you can say, for example, that um, our WMS should be accessed directly because you don't want to have to dump the WMS back, uh, background map, so you can just choose. You say, well, um, directly access it from the data source, and Qfield is just happily going to get the WMS tiles for you directly without any, any load on your infrastructure, just going to pull from wherever they need to be pulled. Then we can put offline editing, which is the default thing for vectors, which is the, the interesting one that we'll do offline and, and pull it back. And then we can go, uh, no, sorry, yeah, that's subatitic, we can push it up and that's it. If uh, we don't have a project up there yet, it's a different project, so the use case more where you start a new project, you already have your QGIS project, um, we can, um, just start a wizard, which is a create new project wizard. Basically, it takes the currently open project and it converts it to a cloud project. That being, we do not want to mess with your project, with your original project. So it makes a copy of it, it will um, edit whatever needs to be edited, but your original project just stays happily wherever it was and nothing gets uh, touched. Um, here I say, how is it going to be called? Where is it going to be stored? Push it up, and all is good. Um, the new project that was edited for the cloud gets opened automatically for you, and from that moment, you are into, into, this, uh, into this new project that is for cloud. I can go and configure all my layers, uh, the action that I want to go as I did before, and then I can, if I did some more changes, push my changes again. Obviously, the same thing um, will, is something will happen on the, on, the, on the device side. And this is where, uh, with Qfield, I'll open up, I'll log in as well, I'll open up um, the list of projects. I'll have some projects that are here, say, available on the cloud and missing locally, means I haven't pulled them yet. Um, I'd say, well, my gardening project, I want to download it. So it's available locally, and it gets open. You see, same symbology, same layer trees, same everything on mobile. And that's one of the great things about the QGIS ecosystem. You get the same with the server as well. So it's a really cool ecosystem to be working in. You can go from QField to QGIS to QGIS server and publishing with the same styling. And, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, we edit an attribute in the field, which is what we want to do eventually. <laughs> um, and we see up here that we have tracking on how many changes we did. In this case, we have just one change. And as soon as we are happy, we say, yeah, I want to push that. We can just push the changes. They get pushed to the web. And 
Q field is happy, says, I have no changes left to push, all good. Keep on working, so do something. Go back on the web so that I can have a look at what actually happened on the web. Um, and here we see that suddenly my gardening project has one change. I can go and, uh, and check this change and we actually see that I changed that one of my trees in the garden um, went to false from true to needs maintenance. So very simple, it's just an example. But here basically what I did is like I looked at the tree, it's way too big, clicked it and say, yeah, this tree does need maintenance. And here you can see just uh, a simple, um, like a resume of what, what's changed, or we can see the complete status of the attributes, so all the attributes that didn't change, and even more, we can see also if you are building something on top of Qfield Cloud, because Qfield Cloud is completely API driven, you can see the raw JSON of the change, so this is what you would be getting if you were interacting via API to Qfield Cloud. If you are building something on top of it, that's, that's what you're getting out of it. If I go to the jobs, I can see that there is a Delta apply and that it finished. No issue there. I go to the data set. There is a new version available. And if I go back to the office, I can pull that new version as well. So I've completed the cycle of the data um, via, from the web, to, I mean, from the field to the web to the office without having actually to have the person on the off in the web, uh, the person on the field having to move back to the office. Pull the data, have my attributes updated, and then I notice, well, no, that was actually wrong. I go back on the web, get another version of the data, I put it in, Q field, in QGIS, and push it up again. In the field, meantime, the gardener is doing something else, is, uh, is pushing conflict, and that's where we get to changes that are not applied. I didn't have the little check uh, override conflicts because I want to manually have a look at um, what the conflicts are. So you see it was turned off. And here you can see that I, we, have a, we have a conflict there where the diameter of the tree is. From here, I can say, well, apply this, ignore it, um, skip it. So I can really say, well, ignore completely things or take the latest, latest version, take the, the version before. Um, we think that automated conflict management is a very tricky thing, and that's why we make it that you have to go and put a tick if you really want to automatically just take the latest version. If not, that's exactly the moment where a person that understands what he's doing should be intervening because conflicts are conflicts and need to be solved. And ideally, they are solved by somebody competent. I decided that my gardener had no idea about how big the tree is and that I was much better in estimated the diameter. And so I ignored his change and we just happily go on with a new version of the data set with ignored changes by the gardener. Um, and, and that's all good. And if then anyway, I'd say, okay, but maybe let's go and have a look what it was before. I can still go back and recover all the versions. Uh, field conflict, um, that's, the, <clears throat> that's the window that I didn't show before, so where I can say either schedule to apply or overwrite or ignore permanently the change. <clears throat> Newer thing we added, um, we can do secrets management, which means um, if you need to have a, a PG, sorry, a PG service file, you can put it as a secret in there. Qfield Cloud will use it to connect to your, um, to your database. Um, and and you, we always saw the, the geo package way because it's easy to show versioning. But those geo packages that get generated could also be PostGIS, uh, could be the data being pushed back to PostGIS. It's just a bit hard. It's not as easy to understand in presentation. So um, here it would be used to just push your data back to your integration database, for example can just set it up easily. And um, the other thing, you can also set environmental variables there. 
So it's not only for PG service, it's also if you need some variables to be set, you can set them in the secret there to get encrypted and you're good to go. Um, Qfield Cloud, we do offer an hosted instance at qfield.cloud, which is currently in beta, you know, in public beta, but it can be deployed in your own cloud, obviously. It's an open source project, so um, it, uh, you can either take it yourself or you can come to us and we'll help you roll it out on your, on your infrastructure. The, um, the version that we host, it's in Switzerland. Um, so it's, it's in a pretty secure place and uh, with pretty strict privacy law. <laughs> and Switzerland has a lot of uh, electri um, hydroelectric electricity, so it's uh, pretty sustainable as well. Um, Pricing is going to be just going to be a um, community tier, which limited storage, uh, then a bigger tier for a pro user, with, and then the main, the one we see for for teams where we invoice per user per month, but only active users, which means your company might have 20 users, but if only three go out on the field during a month, only those three get invoiced. That is why we separate storage costs from user costs in the organization level so that you get a fair, a fair usage um, kind of thing. What's next? Um, one of the first things that we'd like to add is geofencing, so that you're not only giving a role to a person, but you're also giving an area to a person, so that they can just go to, if they are part of Team Florence West, they just go to Florence West. And then uh, eventually also, publishing, you know, like one click, publish this version kind of thing, and you have your web GIS system to publish your data at a certain version. As I said before, it's a customizable tool. It's, uh, it's under MIT license, so you can uh, take it, do what you want with it, and if you can contribute back, because that's how open source projects work. If you do not contribute back, it's a lot of weight on, on one company to carry. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I guess my time is over anyway, please.